Okay, welcome everyone. And uh, for today's lecture, we will be continuing our discussion with the analysis and design of lectural numbers for pre stress concrete uh, beam. So for today, we will be um, focusing our topic on ultimate strength design of PSC member based from the code and, uh, code and requirements stipulated in the National Structural Code of the Philippines 2015, which is also based from ACI 318-19. Okay, so uh, here's our uh, outline for today and outcome. So for as, a, as an outline, we have an introduction uh, with regards to the magiging itsura ng ating um, stress and strain diagram for uh, PSC member. And then we have the um, table for maximum steel stress na ginagamit for tendons. We have the formula that we will be using to identify the, for the value of the stress in the strand at the certain, certain uh, yield strength. Niya. Okay. Uh, we have two equations actually for bonded and unbonded for post-tension beams. And then we have yung nominal strength of the member or yung kanyang uh, moment capacity yung mismong cross-section natin. And then what is the required minimum reinforcement na like RCD, um, wala na yung minimum reinforcement natin na raw na 1.4 over FY. We do not use that anymore in the new code. Ang ginagamit na ngayon is based from another um, another requirement na later they discuss natin. Uh, I know dapat ito din yung sinasatisfy dun sa RCD ninyo. Okay? So for the outcomes of our discussion today, we will be uh, discussing the concept of ultimate strength design of PLC members, specifically you beam lang tayo. Then to explain the requirements of NSCP for USD, then to calculate the nominal and factored nominal strength of the PLC beam, and then to check yung minimum reinforcement if we satisfy yung requirement na yan. Okay? So for today's lecture, Basically, we will be just uh, continuing the analysis or investigation ng beam natin. We are not yet into dun sa design kasi medyo um, pag-design kasi yung consideration, usually may mga design tables na na-provided. And si pre-stress naman kasi is usually used sa ano natin, sa mga very large structures like bridges. So, kaya may mga standard na si Ashto na ina-adapt na may mga cross-sections and meron din siyang ano no, number ng bakal, arrangement ng bakal. So, maybe yung sa design, uh, if uh, we can still cover that, we will uh, be discussing yung design of pre-stress concrete member. Pero uh, for now, we need to, um, to finish first yung analysis ng beam kasi this is also the one included in your board examination. So recently concluded yung board examination ng ano, no? uh, from yesterday and ng kaninang afternoon ang 12, ano, yung uh, May 2022 takers. Okay. And then, ayun, para pagdating ng uh, pre-board exam na nyo, ma-apply nyo na agad yung, um, yung concept for pre-stress concrete design or analysis ng process completely. Alright, so to start, let us go dun sa introduction niya. The flexural strength ng pre-stressed member can be calculated using the same assumptions for the non-pre-stressed concrete member. So yung kay witness stress block na um, 0.85 F'C, yun din yung gagamitin natin for uh, pre-stressed members. So basically, if we have a, a, a section, a let's say a beam, with a steel reinforcement or tendon. Tendon to, ha? Hindi ito yung non-pre-stress rebar natin. Um, same yung ating stress diagram wherein meron tayo ditong compression block na itong compression block na to is meron siyang resultant na ang tawag natin di ba sa kanya is yung C o yung ating compression na resultant wherein yung value niya is based from the magnitude, the 0.85 F' C tapos dun sa area, yung cross-section natin. So, ibig sabihin, itong cross-section na to. Okay? Kaya mapapansin din nyo, yung formula niyan ay equal sa 0.85 F prime C times, itong value na to is equivalent to ano? 
anong quantity? Letter A, no? Then A times yung uh, B natin, which is ito. Kung ano to. Kung ano yung value ng top flange natin. For T, for I section or T cross section, basta kung ano yung value ng taas. Okay? So kung ano yung base ng flange dun sa top, yun yung value natin. And then, we have here yung uh, sa pension natin wherein galing siya dun sa value nung ating um, stress dun sa strand at failure multiplied by the area of the pre-stressing strand. So kung ano yung area nito, so basically, formula lang natin to ng P over A o stress is equal to P over A. Kailangan natin yung stress kaya naging stress um, no? Hamba, stress equal to P over A. Kailangan natin ng load na P kaya pinagmultiply yung stress times A. Kaya meron tayong AP, yung area, then FPS, which is yung stress. Kaya ito ay equals dun sa ating tension. Okay? And then, ano bang bago dito? Uh, yung uh, distance ng centroid nung ating reinforcement from the top flange natin, ang, uh, kung sa reinforce RCD natin is uh, effective depth yung tawag, uh, dito din effective depth of the pre-stressing strand or D sub P. Okay? Um, and then, so kung ano yung, magi, ano yung magiging moment arm ngayon nung couple natin dito na CNT, that will be DP minus A over 2. Okay? Or yung half ng ating height ng stress block natin. So later, may didis kasama natin yung sa, sa strain na same din yung ating uh, maximum strain for concrete which is 0 0.003. So, uh, same din naman na value nito ay C. O yung distance niya ay C. Na meron tayong relationship niyan with A later on. Okay? Um, according to NSCP 409.5.1.1A, o yung design strength natin, our nominal or our factored nominal moment should be greater than dun sa ating um, ultimate moment. So, meaning, yung makakalculate na capacity dapat ng section natin, factored moment ng section natin, should be greater than dun sa loads natin. Ito yung galing sa load combinations natin. Okay? So, as long as nag-greater than yung capacity ng ating member, safe yung ating design for flexure. Okay? Then, we have here values for beta 1 depending on the value or the or, or how much our compressive strength is. So, depending do sa range kung saan siya papasok, tsaka natin kukunin yung value of beta 1. Okay? So, hopefully, uh, not sure kung binibigay yung sa concrete na, ano, no? Hindi ko tanda kung binibigay yung concrete na na formula uh, sa board exam. Pero, um, make sure uh, ma-remember nyo tong formulas na to. Okay, and then what else? Um, so, yan sa maximum steel stress natin. So, according to NSCP table 420.3.2.2, sa pre-stressing strand natin is meron siyang ultimate um, value lang or maximum value ng FPU or yung uh, mismong permitted sa design lang na value ng ating uh, steel stress, no? And depending sa type ng tendo natin, it, it may be strand, wire, or high strength bar. Ito lang yung maximum na pwede natin gamitin. For strand, which is ito yung laging ginagamit sa examples natin so far, 1,860 yung maximum value na FPU. We have yung wire, 1,725. And then yung ating high strength bar is 10,35. So um, you have to, uh, if ever hindi given sa problem, yung FPU, you can go to this table and use this value as your value ng FP or maximum value ng stress mo or ultimate stress ng iyong rebar or tendon. Okay? And then we have here uh, from NSCP section 420.3.2 pages 41-32 to 1-33 uh, 4-133. So we have two equations for bonded and uh, unbonded uh, pre-stress reinforcement. So, kung saan nangyayari yung bonded and unbonded? For bonded, syempre, pag pre-tension tayo, uh, automatic bonded na yung ano natin, no? yung tendon natin, tsaka yung concrete natin. Uh, pero pag post-tension tayo, ang bonded nangyayari kapag yung duct natin is na lagyan na siya ng grout. No? So, meron na siyang fully, uh, fully filled na siya ng grout 
So, bonded priestess reinforcement na yun. And then, meron tayo din for unbonded yeah, priestess reinforcement. Okay? So, itong formula na ito, gagamitin mo to for the identification ng value ng FPS, which is yung gamit natin dun sa ating value ng T. Ito yun, no? Kaya required nating malaman yun. Na itong FPS na to, unlike dun sa non-pre-stress beam natin, na ini-equate natin siya dun sa yield strength natin, di ba? Na sabi natin, pa nag-yield yung concrete, automatic, tension controlled na siya. Pero sa pre-stress, concrete, uh, sa pre-stress, yung tendon, hindi ganun yung behavior niya. Ang always value ni FPS is between siya nung yield strength na FPY tsaka nung FPU. So, it, uh, it can be uh, equal or greater than dun sa FPY but less than FPU natin dun sa yung ultimate stress natin which is ito, galing dito. So, naglalaro siya depending dun sa performance nung mismong pre-stress concrete member natin and also, uh, depende sa losses na nangyari dun sa mismong structure natin, dun sa member natin. Okay? So going back to the formula we have here for bonded pre-stress muna, kailangan ma-satisfy natin na dapat yung FSE is greater than sa 0.5 FPU. What is FSE? Si FSE is yung stress natin kapag uh, yung effective stress natin kapag na na minus na natin lahat ng losses natin. So ibig sabihin kung uh, kung meron tayong effective pre-stressing force Uh, divide lang natin by area, makukuha natin yung FSE. Okay? It should be greater than 0.5 ng FPU natin. So, for bonded pre-stress, ito yung formula natin. We have here you uh, new notations. no? So, si FPU, ito yung galing sa previous table natin dito. Okay? Um, we have here yung YP. Okay? Si YP is based from this particular table. And galing siya sa ratio ng FPY and FPU. Si FPY should be provided by the manufacturer ng mismong uh, rebar natin, ng tendon natin. Pero according to the book of Naman, okay, if you check or uh, yung sa examination natin before, may, may nilagay akong table doon. If you check yung table na yun and uh, look dito as doon sa ESTM minimum specified values natin, for strands, ang FPY daw is... 0.85 ng FPU. So, pwede natin gamitin to as reference kung walang given si manufacturer na value ni FPUI. Also, yung elastic modulus natin na EP, we can also use this values depending on the type of pre-stressing strand na ginamit natin. Okay, or pre-stressing steel na ginamit natin. Okay? So, um, just go back to this table to have a value para sa elastic modulus natin and doon sa FPY natin ng 0.85. Then going back dun sa ating um, slide, to get yung value ng ating gamma P, okay, kailangan natin yung ratio ng FPY and FPU. Okay. So FPY and FPU. So yung FPY natin based from yung table ni Naman, siya ay 0.85 ng FPU. Okay? So, ibig sabihin yung ratio natin na FPY over FPU, it can be equals to 0.85 ng FPU over FPU. Cancel out natin FPU. That is 0.85. So, unless stated the problem, yung value na FPY, we will be using this value as our Y sub P or gamma P. Okay? Kasi 0.85 according dun sa minimum na value. 0.85 lagi siya. So, dito tayo magpukukul under. So, Uh, kung walang given, again, a value na FTY, we will be sticking with the value na 0.4. Okay? So, okay na tayo dito sa, sa YP. Uh, next is yung beta natin. Si beta 1 is according to the uh, value ng F prime si natin, according to sa first slide natin. Okay? Dito, no? According to sa table na to. So, yun yung use nun. And then we have next is itong rho P. So, ibig sabihin, ratio ng pre-stress reinforcement natin, na ito, nilagay ko siya dito kung paano siya makukuha. So, kung ratio siya ng reinforcement, we have yung area ng pre-stressing strand natin divided by our area ng concrete natin. Uh, B times yung effective depth in pre-stressing natin. Okay? So, and yung ratio ng pre-stress reinforcement. FPU, okay na tayo, F prime C. 
Itong D na to is the same ng effective depth ng RCT natin. So, ito yung kung halimbawa meron kayong rebar din na non-pre-stress na rebar. Yan yung D nun. And then, ano pa ba? Ito, yung roto ng uh, yung original din na base sa D. Okay, kung, kung APS over B dito, yung uh, rho na yan is equal sa AS B D. Okay? And then yung rho prime, uh, para naman doon sa compression reinforcement natin, that is AS prime over B D prime. Okay? So yun yun. Okay, so um, ito ay kapag meron tayong mixture ng rebar na non-pre-stressed and pre-stressed. Pero kung wala tayong non-rebar o non-pre-stressed uh, na member, pwedeng eliminate na natin itong term na to. So matitirang term sa atin is ito lang. To calculate for the, band, the um, stress. No? Yung stress natin sa pre-stressing strand natin. Okay? Also, if compression reinforcement is considered, the following should be satisfied. Sabi niya dapat yung Um, yung value ng demo from the center of the, your compression uh, reinforcement to the uh, extreme compression fiber should be greater than 0.15 nung sa pre-stressing natin na effective depth. Okay? Um, if na-satisfy nyo to, yung compression reinforcement natin shall be neglected dun sa analysis for the FPS. Okay? And second, yung term natin na nasa loob ng uh, bracket natin, it should be always greater than 0.17. Okay? If yung compression reinforcement natin is considered. Okay? Pero kung wala naman tayong compression reinforcement, we don't need to satisfy any of these two requirements. Tension. Okay? Uh, question so far sa ating mga notations. Verification. Okay, ayan. So, ito, ayan, uh, reference lang para ma, ma, ma balikan natin kung ano yung mga meaning ng mga letter, no? So, si D is para dun sa AS natin, meaning sa non-pre-stress reinforcement natin. And then, ito yung ating compression reinforcement. We have here uh, yung flange natin o yung top fiber width natin. We have yung distance ng centroid ng compression reinforcement hanggang dun sa fiber natin na D' prime. Okay. Right. Next is for our uh, non, uh, for unbounded pre-stress. Okay. So, a state naman yung sa problem kung what type of um uh, pre-stress the uh, of what type of reinforcement yung meron. So, if ever hindi indicated sa problem of kung what type, kung unbounded or bounded siya, always assume na bounded yung reinforcement natin. Okay? So, if unbonded, sinabi unbonded, ito yung gagamitin natin formula for our FPS. Um, kailangan daw natin kunin yung ratio ng LN over H, wherein yung LN natin is yung clear span natin or yung ating um, clear span. So, ibig sabihin from yung face ng column natin hanggang face ng column. Okay? Clear span yun. Hindi siya yung center to center ng support to support. no So, clear span yung sinabi niya. And then we have yung H which is yung mismong depth nung cross-section natin. Uh, if it's less than 35, we need to satisfy this one. So alam naman natin to. Yung PP natin again is ratio of yung pre-stress and reinforcement natin. And then ito is yung ating um, effective uh, stress. And after ma-deduct natin yung lahat ng losses natin. And kung greater than, yan, ito lang yung gamitin natin. Alright. Ayan. So, ipakita lang natin yung ginagamit na formula, no? Siguro, for pre-stressing para manap yung nominal strength. So, again, uh, basing from our knowledge sa RCD, uh, uh, this should be not, uh, this should not be new to you, no? Again, yung C natin is 0.85 F prime C. Ito yung ating stress times area. So, Uh, yung area natin dyan is times yung A natin times yung B natin na to. Okay? Katulad nung ginawa ko kanina sa first slide natin. Ito yung A natin na yun. Okay? Then from the relationship of A and C, we can um, uh, 
calculate the value of C based from this uh, relationship. So C is equal to A over beta 1. Okay. Then once we have that, anong kailangan natin? So uh, yung ating moment arm, which is DP minus A over 2. Okay. So pag in natin yung ating forces sa stress diagram natin, we have C is equal to T. Makukuha natin. 0.85 F prime C AB is equal to AP FPS. Okay? So, pwede natin makuha yung value ni A. We're in AP FPS is over 0.85 F prime C B. Okay? So, kung ano yung makuha natin yung value ng A, makukuha natin si C. Okay? After natin makuha si C, uh, pupunta tayo dito sa strain diagram natin. We need to determine kung ano yung magiging uh, fee factor natin na gagamitin for um, kailangan natin ma malalaman eh, kung ano yung fee natin. Di ba ang fee natin nagdalaro siya from 0.65 hanggang 0.9. Depende kung compression control, tension control, or um, transition zone yung mismong ano natin, uh, mismong member natin. So, we have here the strain of the pre-stressing, yung center ng pre-stressing natin, itong section na to. And we can actually use this uh, triangles to arrive with a notation para ma-identify natin yung relationship ng dalawa from the um, maximum strain ng ating concrete, okay? yung, which is 0 0.003. So, yung distance na to sa ano is um, DP minus C. Then, from the triangle given, we can identify ECP over DP minus C is equal to 0 0.003 all over C. So, yung strain in the pre-stressing will be equal to 0 0.003 DP minus C over C. So, ito yung equation natin. Kung ano man yung makalculate nating value ni ECP, okay, yun yung i... Ay, nawala yung table. Wala pala ako ng text. Okay, let me look at the uh, the code lang ng NSCP uh, para makita natin yung requirement. So, ang ano niya sa NSCP is Um, table 421.2.2 ng NCP. So let me four twenty one. Okay, so looking at our NCP. Ayan. So, I hope you can see now. Table 421.2.2 ng NSCP. Ayan. So, depende dun sa strain natin at the tensile reinforcement. Um, uh, kung ano yung value natin. So, dito nakalagay si strain TY. Uh, dito for all pre-stress reinforcement, uh, strain TY shall be taken as 0 0.002. So, ibig sabihin kung yung ating uh, calculated strain is less than 0 0.002, compression control daw siya. Ngayon kapag yung calculated strain natin is between 0 0.002 and 0 0.005, nasa transition zone tayo. And then for, if yung calculated nating value is greater than 0 0.005, ibig sabihin tension control tayo. So bakit natin kailangan i-check regarding sa classification niya? That is to get yung value ng fee para dun sa ating factored nominal capacity. Wherein dito, dito tayo sa uh, alin bang gagamitin natin dito. Uh, 
Um, ito, for others, ito yung value ng formula ang gagamitin natin. 0.65 for, for compression controlled. Pero pag tension controlled, automatic 0.9 na tayo. Okay? So, kung ano man yung makuha natin dyan na value, yan yung i uh, ano natin. So, uh, let me copy lang na para pag less than 0.002 compression controlled pag uh, uh, yung 0.002 is less than yung ECP natin, less than 0.005, uh, we have transition. And then kapag yung ECP natin is greater than 0.005, tayo ay tension control. Okay, uh, wait lang, no? So, yung value ng P natin uh, will depend. So, ito is 0. 0.65. So, 0. 0.65 plus 0. 0.25 multiplied by yung ating um, ECP minus yung ETY natin na 0. 0.002 all over 0. 0.005 minus 0. 0.002. Okay, and then point line. Okay, then going back sa ating slide. Okay, yeah. So, sinulat ko na lang dito, no? Uh, ito yun. Kapag nag-less da sa 0. 0.002 compression control, 0. 0.65 ang gagamitin. E pag, kapag in between ng 0. 0.002 and 0. 0.005, transition zone. So, ito yung value ng P natin. And then, kapag... Uh, Greater than 0 0.005, tension control. So, 0 0.9 yung gagamitin natin. Okay? Then, once na na-identify nyo yung number, yung value ng P, okay? So, paano natin makukuha yung moment? Yung moment natin is actually based from dito sa couple natin na to. Okay? May couple tayo dito na nag, yan, nag-rotate ng counterclockwise. So, ito yung moment na hinahanap natin. Yan si MN. Okay? So, si MN equals yan sa pwedeng AP, FPS, times TP minus A over 2. Okay? Based from this figure. And then para sa ating factor, that will be phi MN yung value natin. So, factor nominal moment. Na ito yung i- ito yung i-compare natin sa MU. Na dapat siya yung later than sa MU natin. Okay? So, ayan. Question muna dito, clarification, before we start our example. Okay. Tunay kaya, lahat ay nakakasabay. Okay. Alright, sige. So let's start our first example. Okay. So let's start with example number one. Calculate the nominal moment capacity of the section shown. Assume that the F prime C is 35 MPa, then FP natin is 1860. Okay. So given dimension natin is 300 by 600 with area ng ating pre-stressing strand 592.3 mm squared. That is equivalent to six uh, six pieces ng uh, one half diameter, uh, one half inch diameter na strand. Okay? Then, ang um, ating distance ng center ng reinforcement natin is 550 from the um, outermost compression fiber or yung ating planche. Okay? So, ayan. So, what do we need to calculate first? Siyempre yung value ng FPS kasi kailangan natin yun for our um, dito sa ating uh, values dito, no?
Okay, so, um, kunyari, ito yung neutral axis natin. Okay, and ito yung section ng A. Okay, so yung ano natin ngayon will be So, ito yung sa ating um, APS, uh, FPS, okay? And this is our C. So, 0.85 F prime C, and then ito yung ating A. Okay? And then dito, sa ating strain diagram, um, this is... Our C. Uh, this is 0 0.003. Um, this is ECP. Then this is TP minus C. Okay. Okay. So, kunin muna natin yung ating gamma P uh, based from our ratio. Okay. Ratio ng uh, FPY and FPU. Since wala namang given, no? So, 0.85 uh, FPU over FPU. So, so yung 0.85. According to sa table, ang YP noon is equal to 0.4. Okay? Next, ano yung formula natin? We have FPS. So, wala tayong rebar na non-pre-stress. Non so, purely pre-stressing lang tayo. So, this will be FPU multiplied by 1 minus YP over beta 1 multiplied by the ratio FPU over F prime C. Okay. So, ano kailangan natin dito? Meron na tayong FPU, YP, so beta 1 kailangan natin. Si beta 1 will be greater than 0.85 kasi 35 MPA tayo. So, yung formula for beta uh, is equal to 0 0.85 minus 0 0.05 F prime C minus 28 all over 7. So, substitute natin yung value. So, 0.85 minus 0 0.05 times 35 minus 28 lower 7, yun yung beta 1 natin, that is equivalent to uh, 0.8. Okay? So, okay na tayo sa beta 1. Uh, yung ratio ng reinforcement natin. So, we need uh, P, PP to so APS all over BDP. So, kung yung area natin, 592.3 mm squared. We have uh, base ng flange natin is 300 mm. Um, effective depth ng pre-stressing is 550. So, unit plus dapat yan, no? Kasi yan ay uh, reinforcement ratio, steel ratio natin. 592.3 divide 300 times 550. That is equivalent to 0 0.0035 Zero. Okay? Ano pa? Kailangan natin. May PP na tayo. FPU, F prime C. So, okay na. We can now calculate yung FPS natin. Uh, okay. So, FPS is equal to FPU natin is 1 uh, value is 1860. MPA times 1 minus 0.4 over 0.8 multiplied by 0 0.00359 multiplied by FPU is 1860 all over um, 35. So FPS is equal to 1860 1 minus 0.4 0.8 Excuse me, Anna.
Okay. So we have 1860 times 1 minus 0. 0.4 divide 0. 0.8 times 0. 0.0359 times 1860 all over 35. We have 1682.572 mega Pascal. So this is our FPS or our still stress ng ating uh, tendon reinforcement. Okay? Next, kailangan natin makuha yung value ni um, ni moment. No? So, kailangan natin ng value ni A. Para makuha yung value ni A, we can uh, use yung value ni C at ni T. No? So, C is equal to T. So, 0.85 F prime C AB is equal to APS FPS. So, A natin is APS FPS lower 0.85 F prime C B. So, area natin is 592.3 uh, mm squared multiplied by 1682.572 newton per mm squared all over uh, 0.85 F prime C natin is 35 uh, newton per mm squared multiplied by 300. Okay, so cancel tayo ng unit. Uh, cancel yung isa, matitira mm sa taas. No? Value ng A natin, 592.3 times 168.1682.572. Sorry sa handwriting. No? 0.85 times 35 times 300. We have a value of 111.662 mm. Okay. So, value of C is um, equals to A over beta 1. So, 111.662 mm divided by 0 0.8. Point 0.8 yung value natin, no? yes, point 0.8. So, that is equals to 139.578 mm. Okay? May value na tayo for C. Um, so, makukuha natin mamaya yung sa strain. No? Uh, pero we can now actually, uh, once we calculate yung value ni A, we can now actually get the value of MN, yung ating nominal capacity. Again, this is based from this particular moment na ang lever arm natin ay DP minus A over 2. So, that is APS, FPS times DP minus A over 2. So, equal sa uh, area natin is 592.3. Um, FPS natin is 1682.572. Okay. DP natin is 550 minus 111.662 over 2. Okay. So, yung MN natin, uh, pag kinalculate natin, 592.3. 1682.572 times 550 minus 111.662. Divide natin ng 2. That will be a very huge number. Divide natin by 1 million para maging 492.483 kilonewton meter. Okay? So ito yung ating nominal capacity. Okay? So yan yung nominal capacity natin. Next is we need to check whether our um, nominal capacity or our factor will be tension control, compression control, or nasa transition zone siya. Okay? So, kailangan natin value ng C. So, dito, natin, dito na lang natin lagay. So, ang C natin, ang E, CP natin is equal to 0 0.003 times DP minus C over C. So, 0 0.003 so, DP natin is 550 minus 139.578 over 139.578. Okay. ECP natin is equal to 0 0.003 multiplied by 550 minus 139.578, 139.578. So, we will have a value of 0 0.00. 8821 which is greater than sa 0.005 therefore 
tension control tayo. Okay? Once tension control, meaning ang pin natin ay equal sa 0.9. Ngayon, pag tinanong sa atin kung ano yung ating factored nominal capacity, that will be 0.9 ng 492, 0.483 kilonewton meter. So that is equal to 0.9 times 492.483, we have 443.235 kilonewton meter. So this will be our answer. Or depende. Ah, nakalagay lang pala yung nominal moment capacity. No? So this can be also the answer. Itong isa is factored nominal capacity. Itong isa is nominal capacity lang. Okay. So, ito po yung atin sa example number one. Question. For verification. Okay. Okay tayo. Okay tayo. Magsino? Okay. Okay. Alright. So next, another example. So ibay natin yung cross-section natin. So calculate again the nominal capacity ng section natin shown. So we have F'C equals to 42 MPa na ngayon yung ating compressive strength. And then we have FPU, same lang ng value kasi 1,860 yung sa strand. No? Then ito yung given cross-section natin. We have a T-section with 600, yung top flange natin, uh, base, ng top, base ng flange. Then ang thickness ng flange natin is 150. Distance ng ating uh, strand dun sa flange natin is 500. And ang total height natin is 600. With an area of the same area, no six na uh, one half inch diameter na strand, which is five nine two point three mm squared. Okay, so yung uh, yung method ng pagsolve nito is the same lang din ng previous method natin. Okay, so una is calculate natin yung ating uh, Okay, ang formula na lang muna natin, FPS, since wala tayong given ulit na uh, non-pre-stress rebar, so yung modified tayo na wala ng ano, no? Yung walang kasama, non-pre-stress. Okay. Ito yung kailangan natin. FPU, we have a value, yung gamma P natin. Um, since uh, walang given na uh, FPY, so 0.4 lang ulit yan. Yan, si beta 1 yung kailangan natin i-calculate kasi 0.85 minus uh, 0.05 times uh, 42 na ngayon yung ating uh, yung ating value. So ilan to? Minus 0.05, 42 minus 28 all over 7. We have 0.75. Okay? And then, um, ano pa? Yung value ng PP? So, APS over um, BDP. So, we have 592.3 mm squared all over 600 mm times yung 500 mm. Okay? So, Still ratio natin is 600 times 500 is 0 0.00194. Okay, so then yung value natin. So I think we can now calculate yung FPS natin. So FPS is equal to uh, 0 0.00194. So this can be equal to FPU is 1860 multiplied by 1 minus 0.4 over 0.75 multiplied by 
zero point zero zero one nine seven four. FPU is one eight sixty. Clover F prime C natin is forty two. So we have 1860 times 1 minus 0.4 over 0 0.75. 0 0.001974 times 1860 over 42. We have 1773.279 MPA. Okay. Kuna natin yung value na FPS. Next is to equate yung ating... Um, yung C is equals to T. No? Para makuha yung A is equals to APS FPS all over 0.85 F prime C B. Okay? So assume natin na yung ating compression flange is within lang dito sa flange muna natin. Dito sa, sa big section natin. Okay? So pag chinect natin 592.3 times FPS natin is 177.3.279 all over 0.8542 times 600. Ang mga calculate natin value ni A, 592.3, 177.3.279 all over 0.85 times 42 times 600. We have a value of A na 49.034 which is less than nung ating flange na 150. Therefore, okay lang. No? So, ibig sabihin, treat natin siya as rectangular lang din. With width na 600. Okay? So, kung meron na tayo niyan, we can get na yung ating moment capacity. Okay? Yung MA natin will now be equal to APS FPS D minus DP minus A over 2. So that is uh, 592.3 times 1773.279 times yung 500 minus 49.034 over 2. Okay. So moment capacity natin is 592.3, 1773.279 times 500 minus 49.034 over 2. So we have value of 499.406 kilo newton meter. Okay? So ito yung normal capacity natin. Then when we want to check yung value natin ng uh, uh, strain, we need to get the value of C. So C is equal to A over beta 1. That is 49.034 divided by 0.75. So 49.034 divided 0.75, we have 65.379 MA. Okay. So kung yun yung value ng C, we can get yung value ng ating um, strain. It's equal to 0 0.003. DP natin is 500 minus 65.379 over 65.37. We have 0 0.003 times 500 minus 65.379 over 65.379. We have 0 0.0199, which is greater than 0 0.005. Therefore, tension control. Okay. So, ang fee natin is equal to 0.9. So, ang ating factored nominal capacity is 0.9 times 499.406 uh, kilonewton meter. That will be 499.406 times 0.9. That is 449.4654 kilonewton meter. So, this will be our nominal factored nominal capacity and then this is our nominal capacity
Yeah. So, same as concrete yung analysis, mayroon nang nagbago sa formula ng FPS. No? Naging FPS lang siya, hindi siya FY. Okay? Ngayon, ang isang question is, what if no, nag, uh, greater than dun sa thickness ng flange natin yung mismong compression block natin? So, this particular analysis, itong formula natin dito, kung bawa na greater than siya dun sa 150, will not be um, accurate na. No? Kasi you're still using yung rectangular cross-section. Ngayon, i-analyze mo na siya as T-beam na. Okay? So, paano yung ganun? So, um, let's uh, let's try. What if, alimbawa, yung thickness ng flange natin, gawin natin half lang ng original. So, so let's say, So, assume natin na limbawa from 150, gawin natin 75 na lang po. Okay? Then ito, gawin natin uh, 600 pa din. Then ito, gawin natin 300. And then yung area ng steel natin, um, mula dun sa area natin na uh, uh, 592.3, gawin natin times 2 niya. O, i-doblehin natin yung Ano, gawin natin 12 pieces. Ang ano niya is 1184.6 mm square. Okay? So, ito naman same pa din. 500 pa din to. Okay? So, ngayon, analyze natin ngayon kung ano mangyayari dun sa section natin. So, if we will still treat, is a, treat it as a rectangular beam or as a T-beam. Okay? So, Kailangan natin i-recalculate yung mga values natin. So, ano ba magbabago sa atin ngayon? Uh, yung sa beta natin, hindi magbabago. Yung FPS, uh, uh, yung ating, ayun, magbabago sa atin is yung ating steel ratio. APS over BDP. Yung steel ratio natin will be now 1184.6 mm squared all over yung B natin is 600 mm times yung DP natin na 500 mm. Okay? So, 1184.6 divide 600 times 500. So, yung value natin nga will be 0 0.00395 yung value natin as our second one. Okay? So, using that uh, value, we have FPS is equals to sa FPU natin multiplied by 1 minus yung YP natin over beta 1 times yung PP times FPU over F prime C. Okay? Substitute natin. So, 1860 multiply by 1 minus 0.4 uh, beta natin is 0.75 based from the previous calculation. So, 0 0.00395 multiplied by 1860 all over 42. Okay. Mungkukuha natin FPS ngayon is 1 minus 0 0.4, 0 0.75 times 0 0.00395 times 1860 over 42. So we have anong value natin? May kulang ba sa equation ko? 1860 42. Okay? So this is 1686.471 MPA. Ito yung bago ng, bagong value ng FPS natin. So, pag meron na tayo noon, we can get yung ating C is equal to T. So, ang A natin is equal to 0.85. Uh, mali. So, this is APS. PS all over 0.85 F prime C and B. Okay? So, area ng pre-stressing natin is 1184.6 
0.6 times FPS 1686.471 divided by 0 0.85 42 times 600. Ano yung magiging value ni A? 1184.6, 1686.471, all over 0 0.85 times 42 times 600. So, gagawin natin 93.268 mm, which is greater than dun sa ating thickness ng flange ngayon, which is 75. 75 mm. Okay? So, um, not good, no? Ibig sabihin, therefore, treat as natin as T-beam yung ating cross-section. Okay? So, kung kailangan natin siya i-treat as T-beam, kailangan magkameron tayo ng um, separate section para dito. Okay? So, let's try na kung as separate T-beam tayo, so... Gawin natin ganito. Yeah. So kung ito yung section natin, so kung 300 to, 300, and then uh, this will be 150, then 150. Thickness natin is 75. So magkakameron tayo ng flange area. Tawagin natin itong A1. A1. No? Then, meron tayong web area. So, pwedeng ito, nandito, yung ating... Okay. So, ito yung ating A. Okay? So, ito yung thickness ng flange, 75. Okay? So, ito yung area 2 natin, which is dun sa flange natin. So, pag tinignan natin yan sa... sa stress diagram, uh, meron tayong stress para dun sa uh, ating flange. Okay? Tawagin kong C1. Plus yung stress natin para sa web. Okay? So ito yun, para sa web. So ay sa flange ay sa web. Okay? And then, parehas naman sila counteracted sila ng um, APS, FPS. Okay? So, kung halimbawa ititake natin uh, yung uh, yung moment papunta dito kay C1, this will be equal sa yung uh, distance niya. This will be dp minus yung thickness ng flange over 2. Then, uh, ito will be equal sa, kung ano yung value nito, this is a. So, a over 2 minus yung half nito, which is thickness ng flange over 2. Okay? So, pang nag-equate tayo ngayon, c is equal to t. So, mangyayari, so sa una, 0.85 f prime c ang value ng ano natin is 75 yung thickness ng flange thickness ng flange multiplied by yung web natin yung flange natin na 150 tapos since dalawa yon times 2 okay plus 0.85 f prime c yung sa web natin that is 300 times a Okay, so, yan, so, yan yung sa C natin ngayon. Okay. Equal sa APS, FPS. Next, kunin natin yung value ni A. A will now be equal to APS, FPS minus 0.85 F prime C. TF times 300 all over yung 0.85 F prime C times 300. Okay? Yan. Check natin ngayon. A is equal to 
APS natin is 1184.6 times thickness ng flange is 75 times yung 300. Ah, sorry. Go pa tayo. FPS calculated natin is 1686.471 minus 0 0.85 times 42. Uh, thickness ng flange is 75 times 300. All over 0 0.85, 42 times 3. So A is equals to 1184.6, 1686.471 minus 0 0.85 times 42 times 75 times 300 divided by 0 0.85 times 42 times 300. Ang value natin is 111.535. Okay, which is greater than dun sa thickness ng flange natin, which is 75. So therefore, okay na ito. Okay. So kung okay na yun, we can use this to get yung moment natin. Yung moment natin ngayon will be mula sa rotation nito, papunta doon, and then ito, rotation niya, papunta dito. So magma-minus siya. So itong sa steel natin, minus ito. Total moment natin equals to sa APS, FPS times DP minus thickness ng flange over 2 minus yung C2 natin. So yung C2 is 0.85 F prime C A times 300. Okay. As multiplied by A over 2 minus thickness ng flange over 2. Yun yung moment natin ngayon. So pag sinubstitute natin yung value, so MN is equal to 1184.6 times 1686.471. DP natin is 500 minus thickness, thickness ng flange is 75 over 2 minus 0.85 times 42 times yung value ng A, which is 111.535, multiplied by 300, multiplied by 111.535 over 2, minus yung thickness ng flange over 2. Okay? So yung value ng moment, is equal to 500 minus 75 over 2 minus 0 0.85 times 42 times 111.535 times 300 times 111.535 divided by 2 minus 75 over 2. Our answer will be divided by 1 million. So 902.158 kilo newton meter. Ito yung ating nominal capacity based from our TB. Okay? And then, para makuha si fee, kailangan natin si EC fee. So, 0 0.003. Uh, kunin muna natin yung value ng C. So, C natin is equal to A over beta 1. So, 111.535 divided by 0 0.75 that is 111.535 divided by 0.75. We have 148.713. So, yung ating ECP is equal to 0 0.003. 500 minus 148.713 divided by 148.713. So, 0 0.003 times 500 minus 148.713. Over 148.713, we will have 0 0.00709, which is again greater than the 0 0.005 natin. Therefore, tension controlled. And then ang fee natin is equals to 0.9. So yung ating factored nominal capacity is equals to 0 0.9 times 902.158 kilonewton meter. So, factor natin, 0.9 times 902.158, that is equals to 
811.9422 kilonewton meter. So this will be our factored capacity, factored nominal capacity ng cross section natin. Okay? So yan, so ganyan po analysis kapag T-beam siya. Okay, question? Hello? Wala po ata, sir. Okay, so may question dito, what if daw may non-pre-stress na steel? Madadagdagan po ba equation ng FPS? Yes. Madadagdagan yung equation ng FPS, ang formula ang gagamitin natin will be uh, this one. No? This one yung gagamitin yung formula. And then yung pagkuha ng moment, syempre, uh, based tayo dun sa graph natin. So kailangan yung capacity din ng rebar natin. Yung non-pre-stress non rebar natin plus yung pre-stressing tapos depende kung T-beam, kung T-beam minus yung capacity ng web. Okay? So, kaya ako ay ay I try na to to make itong diagram natin kasi dito magbe-base talaga kapag nag-iba yung condition, halimbawa nagka meron nga ng reinforcement ka ng rebar na non-pre-stressed, dapat yung capacity mo should be uh, the combination ng rebar mo plus yung tendon mo. Okay? Okay? Ayan. So, ayan yung sa ating ano, no? Lectural, uh, nominal capacity. Next is Uh, last section natin for today is itong minimum flexural reinforcement natin. So, sa so minimum flexural reinforcement, sabi dito, based from NSCP 2015, section 409.6.2, for, for pre-stressed member, uh, required daw ng total amount ng pre-stress reinforcement of flexural member to be adequate to develop a design moment strength na at least 1.2 times nung cracking moment natin. Dapat yung na-calculate natin factored nominal capacity should be greater than dun sa ating 1.2 ng moment cracking natin. And based from the previous lecture, na-discuss na dun kung paano i-calculate yung moment cracking, we need to calculate yung value ni uh, modulus of rupture, which is 0.62 na squared at prime C. And then the, the formula for cracking moment is MCR is equals to FRI over YB plus yung effective pre-stressing natin times I over A over YB plus PE times yung eccentricity natin. Ayan. So, paano natin na-apply ito? How can we check na, ano no, wala na yung before na, na code. Kasi before na code, meron di ba may P mean before, no? Matatanong yung P-min, yung 1.4 over Fy. Ngayon, wala na siyang ganito. Okay? Ang kailangan na niya satisfy, itong solution na to. Kasi ba diba, itong M natin, nakadepend naman to doon sa reinforcement natin. And then, itong cracking moment natin, nakadepend naman siya doon sa pre-stressing strand natin, dito. And also, doon sa, ano natin, um, tensile capacity ng concrete which is ito yung modulus rupture modulus of rupture natin okay so yun yung check natin uh, ngayon so as an example uh, using the values of uh, the first example okay so calculate daw natin yung nominal uh, hindi ko na bago no uh, i-calculate na i-check natin for uh, minimum reinforcement if na satisfy natin if yung given daw sa atin meron tayong jacking force na 1,400 MPA and then meron tayong total loss na 200 MPA. What will be our value ng uh, moment cracking? Okay? So yun yung pinapahanap sa atin ngayon. So I hope you would uh, watch yung video na last time no? kasi nga yun yung sa cracking moment. So ang kailangan natin muna dito is to identify yung mga ano natin, uh, yung mga kailangan nating uh, formula. Okay? So based dun sa cracking moment formula, ang kailangan natin for MCR is FRI 
over yb plus vei over ayb plus pe times e no fortunately rectangular lang to okay pero pag hindi na siya rectangular doon tayo may ano no medyo mahaba ang solution okay so si fr pwede natin makuha directly so si fr is equal to 0.62 ng square root of f prime c that is 0.62 times square root ng 35 so fr natin is 0.62 square root of 35 that is 3.67 mpa okay okay na tayo diyan si i i natin is 300 times 600 cube over 12 so i natin is equal to Uh, so 5.4 times 10 to the 9 mm to the 4. Okay? Yan yung value ng inertia natin. So, Sunod YB natin. So yung bottom na uh, extreme fiber natin. So since this is a rectangular section, so YB natin is ito. No? So that is 300. Okay. Pre-stressing PE, uh, later, ipahuli natin yun. Um, area, uh, alam naman natin area, is just 300 times 600. Huh? So, 180. 180 times 10 to the 3 uh, mm squared. Yan yung area natin. Um, kailangan natin eccentricity. No? Eccentricity natin is YB or gawin natin yung half na kung 550 to minus natin tong half na 300 para makuha natin tong distance na to which is yung eccentricity natin. Okay? So 550 minus 300 we have 250. Okay? So E natin is 250. So ang problema na lang natin is si effective pre-stressing na lang, no? Ang kailangan natin is effective pre-stressing na lang. Para makuha yun, kailangan lang natin um, i-base dun sa ating jacking force. Okay? So, um, FPE natin, yung FSE natin, equals dun sa given na jacking force minus dun sa total loss. Naka, fortunately, given dito yung total loss. Okay? So, we have 1,4 MPA minus 200 MPA we have yung ating effective pre-stressing after losses na 1,200 MPA. Okay? Kung kailangan natin ng kanyang PE, o PSE o PE, so yung 1,200 MPA natin, mumultiply natin dun sa area natin. Area natin dito is 592.3 mm squared. So PE natin is 1,2 times 592.3 we have um, 710.76 kilo newton. Okay? Ito yung value ng PE. So, I think we can now calculate yung MCR natin kasi all values are now uh, given. So, ang moment cracking natin will be equal to 3.67 times 5.4 times 10 to the 9 all over YB natin is 300 plus 7, 1, 0 0.76 times 10 to the 3 newton multiplied by 5.4 times 10 to the 9 all over A natin is 180 times 10 cube times 300 plus yung PE natin na 710.76 times 10 cube times eccentricity na 250 mm. So MCR is equal to so 3.67, 5.4 times 10 to the 9 over 300 plus 710.76 times 10 to the 3, 5.4 times 10 to the 9, all over 180 times 10 to the 3 times 300 plus 710.76 times 10 to the 3 times 250. We will have a value of divide 1 million. So 314.826 
kilo newton meter. So, ito yung calculated natin na MCR. Tingnan natin yung na-calculate natin value ng PMN dun sa first example natin. So, PMN natin dito is 443.235. Okay. Dito. So, 443.435 kilonewton meter. Ang kailangan natin, si PMN will be greater than or equal sa 1.2 ng MCR natin. Okay? Ano ba yung 1.2 ng MCR? So, siguro next slide na lang, no? Para hindi malito. Okay, so ito ay 443. Uh, Punin ko na din ito. So, ito yung ating MCR. So, 443.435 kilonewton meter. Is it greater than sa 1.2 ng 314.826 kilonewton meter? So, 1.2 314.826 So 377.7912 kilonewton meter. Okay? So since this value, yung 1.2 MCR natin is less than dun sa value ng PMN natin na factored. Therefore, okay tayo or yung minimum reinforcement yung minimum reinforcement Minimum risk reinforcement requirement is satisfied. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, uh, pasado na kagad kayo sa minimum reinforcement criteria. Okay? So, if ever mag-less than, ano? Pag nag-less than, ang gagamitin mong PMN ngayon will be itong MCR natin. And then, ikukunin mo ngayon kung ano yung area na yon para dagdagan mo yung area nung pre-stressing mo. Kasi kulang. Ibig sabihin ay kulang. So ngayon, para malaman mo kung ilan yung idadagdag mong pre-stressing, uh, kailangan kunin mo sa MCR or uh, pwede ka mag, uh, mag-trial na halimbawa from 6 pieces, gawin mong 10 pieces or uh, 12 pieces kung ano mangyayari doon sa value ng PMN mo. Okay? Hanggang maging masatisfy natin itong MCR dito. So, ganun po yung sa minimum reinforcement natin. For maximum reinforcement, uh, I think walang wala nang limit ngayon si ano, si code regarding maximum reinforcement. Uh, ang nililimit lang niya syempre is kapag yung ano na, pag i-enclose na siya ng mga shear reinforcement or kapag halimbawa sobrang bigat naman niya na no. So, ayun. Question dito sa minimum reinforcement um, example natin. Okay. Okay tayo sa so USD. Okay. If you don't have any more question, this ends our lecture for today. And this will be the uh, end of scope ng ating semifinals exam. Okay.